Before I continue making videos, I want to address something that I've been thinking about for the past little while. What is gained from detailed readings of popular culture? I get this conversation whenever I talk about something being particularly problematic, because reliably, if I bring it up, someone says, why do you have to inject politics into everything? To which my response is this Anita Sarkeesian clip. And it's always Anita Sarkeesian, because I love using a dead horse to beat another dead horse. But remember that it's both possible, and even necessary, to simultaneously enjoy media while also being critical of its more problematic or pernicious aspects. I also think art is important because art is a reflection of the culture and people that make it. Let me explain. You ever play Civilization V? Statistically, you probably have, or you at least own it. Civilization has a system for creating great works, and the way those great works are created is by consuming great people. The fact that the game causes you to use up people like a resource and the concentration of great people as a force to drive history and culture is a very great man theory of history, but I don't want to just remake the Aaron Signal video on it. Sorry, tangent. The production of great people requires that you have specialists working in certain buildings. The Writers Guild, Artists Guild, Musicians Guild, and through those specialists working, they create great people, and specialists are a subset of the population and the types of great people generated are reflections of your distribution of specialists. What I'm saying is that the works of art that are created are inherently a reflection of the culture that makes them, and especially of the people that made them, the people who gave those people their money. YouTube videos are a direct example. A creator who works on a video alone is putting their singular voice into a work. If it's a team, then that voice is concentrated through the voice of the person doing the presenting. But this happens at all levels. Any music album you put on is a reflection of the band, the producer, the engineer, the manager. It all fits in a place in time along a timeline of an artist's body of work. And this goes on and on into big budget movies, which, well, not necessarily always being projects that are reflections of the people that made them, are necessarily reflections of the people who made them come about. This applies to video games even. A solo development effort by someone like Lucas Pope or Edmund McMillan is going to have a singular vision that something like a Ubisoft open world game can never have because of all the hands that went into it. This is why it's simultaneously so frustrating and so predictable when anything big budget blockbuster level comes out and is entirely inoffensive and basically butter sandwich levels of interest. If you want a fantastic example, look no further than Far Cry 5. This is a game that invites questions about its universe and characters that are answered by hand waves that go out of their way to look as inoffensive as possible. It's as though making any kind of political statement would get in the way of the fun. Really, the thing that I think a lot of AAA video games these days do wrong is that they fail on any level to inconvenience the player. Let's compare something like Thief 2 The Metal Age to Deus Ex Mankind Divided. In Thief 2, when you're playing on the highest difficulty, and even on most difficulty settings above easy, one of the objectives is to not kill anyone. The mission automatically fails if you kill anyone. I found this out the hard way once during a game session when I threw a guard's body into a pool, and after a while the mission auto-failed as though I killed someone, because it tracks what bodies are unconscious and what are dead, and it changes it if the unconscious body stays in water for too long. Compare that to basically any game nowadays where the game only ever gives you a game over screen if you fuck up so royally that you manage to run out of regenerating health. Everything else is under the pretense of playing the game your way. This was a long video game related tangent, but I think it rings true if only because it's an obvious example of what the modern audience wants out of its entertainment. It wants Law and Order, it wants Grey's Anatomy, it wants mindless entertainment that is uncomplicated and has nothing to say. Everything in the context of a work of art means something. Everything comes in baked in with cultural expectations, even in incredibly obvious ways. Any movie starring English-speaking characters assumes that English is the default language for anyone seeing the movie, especially because most of these movies subtitle any character not speaking in English. 
As a side note, Metal Gear Solid 3 hangs a lampshade on this very well by having a throwaway line about Naked Snake's Russian being excellent, basically saying, everyone here is speaking Russian, we're just seeing it translated. Things like culture and language are incredibly important to the interpretation of art, to put the work in the context of the time and place that the person created it and the circumstances of its creation are important to understanding it. There's a massive difference in scope and style from Stephen King writing on a typewriter in a trailer, hoping against hope to be a published author, and Stephen King dumping 1,200 pages on a publisher and them going, yeah, all right. A full look at Harry Potter, for instance, in the year 2020 would be incomplete without looking at the recent Twitter meltdowns of J.K. Rowling and the way that fandoms and even discourse as a whole has received the news that their heroine holds views that are at least borderline transphobic, and that's kind of being charitable. And those Twitter meltdowns caused a look back into Harry Potter and a discussion about death of the author that is both productive and revealing. Media criticism, especially in a world that is dominated in nearly every aspect by media empires, is more important than ever. And it's especially so, not as a consumer buyer's guide, lord knows we don't need more of those, but as an intellectual exercise. That's what I'm building this channel on, even if I don't have the reach, resources, skill, or knowledge to write a better series of fantasy novels than Harry Potter, I can sure as fuck deconstruct them in what they say about generational structures of wealth and power and the corrupting influence of greed. I'm not going to, because that means I'd actually have to reread those books and I'd rather put an ice pick in my forehead. But that's the idea with media criticism, and also why I think it's important to do media analysis through every possible filter, and that every possible voice should be out there making things known. Understanding Harry Potter as written by someone with a problematic view of LGBT people in a story about fate determined by the circumstances of Harry's birth, even going back to a folk tale about a meeting with death himself? Yeah, maybe there's something to unpack there about what the text says about someone trying to alter something that they're given at birth. No, I'm not going to argue that Harry Potter itself is transphobic. That's dumb, I don't have the time or the energy or the aforementioned ice pick to get through that nonsense. What I'm going to argue is that we should all look harder at the things that we enjoy. Because by talking about what we liked versus something that we didn't like, it's not just whether or not we liked it, it enriches our culture and allows us to create better and better works. Again, as the original feminist on the internet once said, but remember that it's both possible, and even necessary, to simultaneously enjoy media while also being critical of its more problematic or pernicious aspects. So this is where the original script for this video ended, and why it meant and it might end up being out late. But I really want to touch on how this is a piece of the puzzle with regards to how analysis and critique are handled in the modern YouTube space. As I've touched on in earlier videos, YouTube, and especially YouTube movie criticism, is a place where it becomes clearer and clearer that there's a lack of truly diverse voices. It feels like the deeper you go, you start to find more diverse voices, but as a trans person who made the mistake of trying to make a channel specifically about trans representation in media, I feel like I would rather not be seen as that one trans YouTuber, but would much rather just be another voice in the discourse. The idea to add this addendum came up when I watched the first few episodes of the Escapists Movies podcast, and the group of them opened up with a joke about three men that look like eggs. I enjoyed the podcast. The Escapist as a site to me has always been a lot more than just a Yahtzee vehicle. I discovered Jim Sterling and Movie Bob on there, and those three are creators that I've followed and managed to enjoy for most of my life. Unlike channels like Rooster Teeth, which, once they stumbled onto the Minecraft Let's Play gold mine, started skewing younger and younger, their content grew up with me. Even when the Jimquisition moved off the site and Bob had to go in alone on Patreon with new branding, I followed their content because I liked them. And The Escapist is just one case study. Nearly every site and many popular YouTube channels have this problem. And any minority voice that's in the approved group is introduced as a minority perspective on stuff. I really want to provide a perspective on anything that's not just trans stuff distilled so cis men can enjoy it. So yeah, new mission statement, make good videos. I know, right? Revolutionary stuff, just making good content. 
Also, if the escapist is looking for a new columnist video essayist, if I did this full time, I bet I could do a new one of these every week. I mean, come on, my entire channel is just a remix of the three video essay series you already produce. Is begging for a job at the end of a YouTube video a good idea? I don't know, we'll see.